Hello and welcome to We Grow Wild. This is my wild knitting podcast number 16. If I am getting it right, yeah, doesn't matter. And so today, this episode is packed with cows. <laughs> I've been experimenting quite a lot and uh, succeeding and failing brutally so I'm gonna show you different projects and so buckle up I also have some knitting plans so I'm gonna show you also some fall autumn niche knitting plans and uh, that's pretty much it if you stumble across this place and uh, place in the on the internet and you've never been here before i hope you'll have a great inspiration or you will be entertained you will enjoy this if you do please consider subscribing it matters it makes uh, such a difference for the channel we reached 8000 subscribers with 8000 wild creatures here um, can you believe it? I almost cannot, but I'm very, very, very grateful for all of you who have been subscribing, who have been here before, and thank you so very much. So today is another regular podcast episode. I already tried to record this one, to be honest. Yesterday I was in, with a beautiful background in my behind our house and. Yeah, the camera at some point died, so yeah, it was a bit wild. <sighs> we made it. For those who don't know me, um, my name is Martina Elisabetta. I currently live in the center of Italy and I've always had this urge to make things for myself. Um, whether that means to grow my own food or to you know make my own tools and garments in this case and i've been always uh, loving to experiment and try different things and um, i fail a lot i try a lot of different things and i fail very miserably sometimes sometimes very joyfully and it's fun, but also stressful. But I think that to experiment and be curious and just follow, uh, you know, this enthusiasm of wanting to create something, it's very, it's almost more important than the actual end result. So I encourage you to experiment more if you feel like doing so. I have been diving a little bit, just picking through the world of spinning my own wool. I don't have my own wool yet to try it, but we, me and my partner made a drop spindle. So that's exciting. I have everything ready to start spinning my wool. And I have to thank again Sue. Sue is an amazing maker and she's a spinner. She's been spinning different type of fibers throughout her life. Yeah, she has been uh, very much an inspiration for me and she's been sending me videos and emails to help me learn to spin and it's been such a, a delight. And uh, so thank you so much, Sue. I'll put into practice your advices soon. <laughs> so that's something that I've been kind of up to, but I've also been knitting a lot. Let's start with some finished object. Um, I'm getting a bit warm on my neck. Um, but this is a finished object. Shall I, show, shall I stand up and show you? It's a quite cropped uh, drop shoulder garment. I haven't blocked it, to be honest, because I that's what I do usually with garments like sweaters. I like to... When I finish them, I like to wear them one or two days to understand if I like the length 
or the fit if I need to you know unravel parts of it and make knit it longer or shorter you know and uh, it's a bit cropped as I showed you but I like it I think it will look really nice um, with uh, dresses and eye-waisted pants and um, I really like how this fits on me and I really like the construction. I kind of got inspired um, with the construction. I got inspired uh, from the top or t-shirt, the Cloudberry Tee by Fibertails. It has this drop shoulder construction and it's constructed from the top down so you can still reg regulate the length of the body or the sleeves and stuff and um, I kind of got inspired by that construction but I changed completely the gauge the stitch count made a lot of modifications so I can't really say that I followed that pattern completely but I got inspired and I kind of took notes um, from that pattern and it's I think it's a beautiful pattern it's very it looks different, I mean it has this drop shoulders as well, but it's a tee and it's knitted with a plant-based fiber. You can knit it also with wool, I guess, and it has some floral, nice uh, little floral details on the sleeves. And I've knitted it previously, uh, so I really liked that construction. It was interesting and I'm kind of... Um, excited to knit more drop shoulders garments especially for Mike. Um, I knitted two sweaters for him one was a very successful one another one wasn't really fitting well and both of them had a I think both of them were kind of raglan sweaters top-down raglan sweaters I think and I would like to knit something like this for Mike, of course, longer and bigger, and yeah. But yeah, I finished, yeah, I'll talk about it later. So I finished this one um, probably two weeks ago, like just straight after the previous podcast episode. So it took me around a week to knit it. It was a fairly quick project. And I used a, an affordable commercial yarn and is, um, I used two yarns. One was a um, silk mohair, another one was the alpaca and wool, an alpaca and wool blend, Drops Flora. And the silk mohair was the Drops Kid Silk. And I already talked about that those yarns. I, to be honest, I decided to knit this uh, garment for myself to kind of have a staple, kind of easygoing garment that I don't that I can just wear anywhere that I don't you know in the forest hiking. I can just throw in my bag, and I'm not caring too much about it. So. I didn't have a huge budget to spend, but I decided to not support this brand uh, any longer. So I had extra yarn left and I, I finished a hat for me. This is the only hat I um, own right now. And uh, for the most part of my knitting journey, I knitted hats, but I give them all. So. Yeah, but so I've knitted this hat. It took me two days. It's a very quick and nice project. And I didn't, I had enough yarn to knit the most part of the hat. And then I did the bubbles, this strange flower bubbles um, it, with another silk mohair because I finished the the forest green silk mohair I was holding together with the Drops Flora and I decided to um, hold the main yarn with another with two other silk mohair this part <laughs> which is kind of this brownish greenish it's another little leftover skeins that I had 
and this is a lighter silk mohair which is this one on the top this kind of light green and this was the main yarn I used and I have I think two more skeins like this but I really love this hat I'll tell you absolutely what pattern I followed because I followed the pattern to the detail this time just followed and uh, really like it because you can wear it like a hipster hat <laughs> even though I'm far from being a hipster and or like just a uh, folded like that and I really like how the garter looks it feels very fluffy and cozy I haven't blocked it because I finished it yesterday evening but I really like it and I like the color I think this episode is very charged <laughs> with green colors um, yeah I would say so yeah, I don't know. I think green is my color right now. I just love it. And this is the hat. I follow this pattern from this beautiful book, which is the Knits About Winter by Emily Foden. And this is my first and only book, knitting book. I can't believe it. I gifted this myself. I, I love it. It's, um, I feel really happy to have this as my first knitting book. I think I won't buy too many knitting books. Maybe. Maybe I will. I don't know. But I want to have fewer books and patterns and just really love them and kind of maybe tweak them and, you know, and try to... Uh, make garments and get inspired by the constructions but then you know change things and yeah and I love the graphic um, the graphical part the graphic design of this book I am a graphic design myself so I really appreciate when things are really well well made I really love all the colors and yeah the pictures the photos but this is the hat it's called the sky hill and there there are two options i think there are also mittens i think i'll probably knit mittens as well look how pretty these mittens are and there is a shorter hat option short version and a longer version i love it and i have been very excited because there are uh, i think there are 12 patterns um really beautiful patterns in this book and i want to knit many of them i think i'll at some point i'll knit all of them <laughs> And, um, but there is one that I'm absolutely completely in love with. Um, there is the S East Wind uh, jacket that I want to knit for myself. But I think I want to knit this um, jumper. It's called Soire. Soire. And it's a jumper which has again a drop shoulder construction and um, it has some sort of braids on the on the side and uh, let me see if there is a better picture to show you no but it's absolutely gorgeous and um, I want to knit one of that but I bought this book mainly so, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends how you see it, um, you can't purchase, at, at least this is what I've seen, but I could be wrong. Um, you can't purchase pat the, the patterns that are in this book singularly. 
Uh, so there is a PDF version of the book. So if on Ravelry, for example, if you see the one, like the hat, for example, page, um, there you see all the projects. And if you want to buy the, the pattern, I think you have to buy the entire book, which is not super expensive, especially the digital version. But I decided to buy the the you know analog version because I don't own any knitting books and I really loved the the graphics and uh, the feeling of this book and the patterns but the main reason I wanted to buy this book is this this is a vest I'm not really a vest person but I absolutely love love this vest this is the winter berry and this is a beautiful vest i think it's fairly simple but it has these bubbles and braids and moss stitch on the side and uh, i think uh, here it is here are better pictures and i think i would like to knit a vest for myself in a, even if i don't think I'm such a vast person, but I think I will really use this a lot. And if I don't use it, I can knit, knit it with sleeves. So add sleeves. That's also always an option with vests, I think. Um, but there are a lot of beautiful, beautiful patterns. And the poetry, um, the yarns. I love this book. I really would recommend it if you want to, you know, treat yourself with a special book, knitting book. And, but first check the different patterns that you can find inside it because maybe it's not really your style and then you will be disappointed. Um, I went to knit the Winterberry vest with a yarn that I received by Iveta. Thank you so much, Iveta. She contacted me, she's a subscriber, and she was like, oh, I've heard that you really like uh, rustic yarn, and I have quite a lot. Uh, maybe I can just send you some. She doesn't sell yarn, so she didn't do it with the purpose of, you know, receiving something back. She just sent me amazing undyed rustic yarn. And it's quite a lot she sent to me four skeins I think like that and I feel so grateful and I didn't expect in the bag she and then I'll talk about the next project but I want to talk about this first she sent me this bag as well that she made for me um, see she has a little Etsy shop where she sells some linen um, objects that she makes and garments and some uh, bags that she makes out of different materials and this looks like paper and it's kind of a paper but it has a special name that now I don't remember um, but it's waterproof and it's super light so I can just bring it with me and knit while I walk and it doesn't almost feel that you have a bag at all um, but it's still sturdy and inside it has um, a linen fabric that kind of covers it up and she also gave me I already have a project that I'll show you <laughs> I'll show you very soon and she also gave me and made for me a little pouch <laughs> I can put socks projects inside this and it looks so it looks really like a piece of paper but it's so sturdy feels sturdy and nice and it, it, it really fits with my style <laughs> so thank you so much Iveta and please check her Etsy shop she said you don't have to mention it but I I feel like I want to mention it because it's such a it's such a nice, you know, little shop and uh, she, I don't think she works with her Etsy shop. It's like an, ex, a night, like an extra little online store that she has. 
uh, but it would really like she would really like to leave off her art and her creations so I will I really wish you to be successful so check her nice little Etsy shop I link it in the description box so inside this bag lives a very very cool project so I guess um, I showed you the two finished objects, the hat and this uh, jumper. By the way, I think I kind of, I'm not really super much on Ravelry, but I added this project on Ravelry if you want to check things. Okay, so are you ready? This is one of the cutest thing you probably will see in this episode. <laughs> I think it's just so, so cute. I put also little buttons. So this is a cardigan that I'm knitting for myself. I have more hair everywhere. I love this project and this I'm knitting it with um, two skeins, two yarns that I hold together. Uh, one is a cashmere and merino blend. And another one is a silk mohair by Ruby and Roses Yarns. Uh, Addy contacted me some weeks ago and she sent me some of her new collection yarns that she hand dyed. And uh, I, I'm testing kind of uh, for myself this yarn and it looks, it's, it feels it's such a luxury to knit uh, with this yarn. This, um, so this yarn is part of her new collection, which she just released and is um, the Letter Writer Collection. And the yarns have different names inspired by letter writing. So it's really cool. I, I advise you to check it up if you are in the lookout for hand dyed yarns. And this is a love note, this nice, pink, um, mauve pink, and this is tattered pages, I think. Let me check because I have my yarn stash here. So this is the yarn I'm using. Love note and tattered pages. Silk mohair. So I'm holding these two together to create this super beautiful fabric. Now, what am I knitting? <laughs> so I'm actually following a little bit uh, a pattern that I purchased, which is um, a pattern from Albiona McLaughlin. Never know how to pronounce her surname. I'll put it on the screen. And the pattern is called the Ultimate Lazy Cardigan, T-U-L-C, Talc, I call, yeah, I guess you can pronounce it talc or T-U-L-C. And um, it's called the ultimate uh, lazy cardigan, but it's not lazy at all. Like you have to focus at least up until you divide for, divide the sleeves uh, from the body. So it's called the ultimate uh, lazy cardigan because you need the neckline and the bottom band as you, knit you know as you knit the body so you don't have to later on pick up stitches and knit the bottom band and then the neck line uh, that neck band yeah and uh, guess today i don't have the words wonder when i have them but yeah and yesterday or the other day i decided to make a little some little buttons from the olive tree wood that I still have in my wood workshop. And uh, they look absolutely cute, I think, with this design. The sleeves, I think they look very beautiful, but um, it's kind of like German short rows and you really have to trust the pattern and follow it blindly because Sometimes you, you're, you don't know what you're doing. And, <laughs> but I'm really happy how it fits and how it looks. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and it fits really well on me. Thinking, I think I'm knitting the size 
second or first. The gauge is a little bit different, um, but I'm using the recommended needle sizes, uh, which is um, four millimeters. And now I'm knitting one sleeve and the body is kind of like on hold because I want to understand how much yarn I have. Like I'll first knit the sleeves and then with the rest of the yarn, I'll knit the body because I don't, I just have another skein of the main yarn here and this much which I think it will be enough for knitting the sleeves and another little part of the body, but maybe it will be a bit cropped, which I love, but yeah, I have quite many crops, cropped uh, sweaters and cardigans. Cardigans, I have just one, but yeah. And I really, really love this project. Um, but one thing that I decided to add are these, um, kind of is this texture work detail that I added on both, um, if you can see it on the back, that I added on two parts of the body and on the sleeves. And it's basically a vicle braid, vicle braid, like a lateral braid and the starting of a cable and then lateral braid again. So I've been a little bit experimenting with some texture, some texture work because um, I was getting bored with just stocking it. I absolutely love it. I think it looks really romantic. It's something that I would probably wear if I would have to, if I would want to write a letter. <laughs> and um, yeah, I discovered um, while I was knitting this project, this jumper, I discovered that I love to knit sleeves with um, smaller, super small circular needles. These are 25 um, centimeters circular needles and this is the size 4 millimeters. And the knitting is so much more fluid and you don't have to, usually I would knit sleeves with magic loop. So it's, you, your knitting flow is kind of interrupted all the time, but with, um, with small circular needles, it's like you're knitting socks. Uh, so it's really fast, you know, um, just knitting in the round. And um, then like, because I really, I'm not always enjoying to knit, his, to knit sleeves, um, but with this, I'm really enjoying it. So I've been really, really loving knitting on this project and I brought it with me to some little trips that we did. It's been, it's been fun. So I'm really looking forward to have it. And it's quite warm to be honest, because not only because of the silk mohair, but I think also this cashmere and merino, uh, skein uh, or yarn uh, is quite warm, quite nice. It's a three ply fragrant rose base, 383 yards and 100 grams. You have quite some yardage here. And then I have many different whips, so we just started. <laughs> This project, I picked it up again after months. I cast it on this project when I was on the train and on the airport to go to visit my sister in May, it was, I think, uh, when I went to Dublin. My sister lives in Dublin and uh, I cast it on this project. This is the Ghost Whisper by Park Williams. It has a beautiful, fun look. Uh, and it's knitted in a, a very like loose gauge because you knit it with one strand of silk mohair, like a laceway yarn. As you can see, you can see my hand. Um, and um, you knit it with needle size, either 5.5 millimeters or six, I don't remember now, but I'm knitting 
it with a needle size 5 millimeters because I have a very loose gauge with this project. And so, where is it? Yeah. So I kind of stopped knitting on it because it didn't really spark joy. So it was like just standing in the naughty corner uh, <laughs> for months. But then uh, yesterday I saw it again and I was like, I really would like to, to have it and, and try and try to wear something like this because it's not super practical. It's just like this not like warm, but not warm type of garment, but I think it would be really good for middle seasons, like spring and autumn. So I guess it's an autumn project. And I've, before it already had, I, I was, I knitted already a sleeve in the main color, this beautiful golden yellow. I knitted the sleeves, but it, looked weird it was like this massive sleeve like it's almost a body not a sleeve so I picked up I kind of cut it just I decided to pick up less stitches and to have this dark brown silk mohair on one sleeve and then on the other sleeve I don't know will I have enough brown still I don't think so. So I might add this um, lighter beige on for the other sleeve. So it would be a little bit like strange or maybe like a white, not a white. I don't know if I will add a white. I have these three different silk mohair or maybe this mo like this violet weird violet color i think it would be really nice with just the violet but i already started this sleeve and i can't be bothered to unravel it and uh it's a very quick project i would say because this this the gauge is so loose and you know you knit it with five or six millimeter needles so it's quite quite fast project but uh, it's not a project that like at least for me I would have to and I have to look at what I'm knitting because otherwise I slip stitches it's kind of like this really lace way yarn it's a bit difficult to manage um, but I think it would be a really fun project to have a little fun garment. Now, I don't know, I think it would be a bit more useful if I continue this bell sleeve and I make it kind of like long and then I just decrease abruptly on the wrist and kind of have it with long sleeves. Um, so that's something that I could do because I think the pattern recommends um, the design is uh, short sleeves like with these puffy sleeves um, but I don't know how useful that would be for me like I don't need a mohair t-shirt I think but we'll see what I'll feel now I think I'll keep knitting this sleeve and then see if it makes sense or I'll maybe I'll try it I'll wear it like I just try it on and see how it looks um, but it's it's a very very light project and if you have extra skeins of silk mohair I think you probably need I don't know three skeins something like two I don't know uh, don't hold me, hold me accountable with yard age and things like that no idea uh, <laughs> but it's a fun little project and i'm happy i picked it up again because it was just standing there and looking at me sadly <laughs> so okay that's one whip then we have let me move things because they're all in one place we have a project here, just to silk more hair go away. So, on this big basket is living. Oh no, I'm in the middle of a row. No! 
Let me just slip these stitches and one. Don't you tell me. Always like that. So this is a project I'm knitting for our uh, Shall We Shall Knit Along. We are doing, we're a beautiful group and we are knitting shawls and there are stunning projects. We have an Instagram group which is big. There are many people there. People are sharing their projects and it's been such a wonderful, you know, community bonding. And uh, I love it. I love to see people's projects and the yarn choices. Um, yeah. I also created a Ravelry group. I'm not always there, but when it comes to picking up the winner, there will be a little price. Um, not that it matters, but you know, just to give something. Um, when I pick up the winner, I think I'll use the Ravelry group where there are all of the finished projects. So I can just go through all of them and just pick a random winner. And I'm knitting the Colville shawl by Gabriella uh, from the Mary, Mary Weather Knitting Podcast. And I have been quite slow with this project, um, mostly because it's a little impractical. I was holding together three skeins uh, of yarn one was a cone, which is the most unpractical thing. And I know I could cake it up and blah, 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 but can't be bothered. And another one was a beautiful hand-dyed yarn. I talked about this project in my previous two, ep previous two podcast episodes. So if you want to check it out, so I don't repeat myself. And... Um, and then I was holding uh, these, th these two yarns together with a silk mohair, but I decided to quit the silk mohair because I think it was diminishing the beautiful vibrant color of the other two yarns. As you can see here, I used in this um, moss stitch section, I used um, the silk mohair maybe the lighting, the sun is going down. And on this uh, lattice section, I'm using um, just the two other yarns. This is a bamboo, 100% bamboo yarn from Silk City Fibers. And this is, I don't remember the name of this yarn, but it's a silk and wool blend, very luxurious beautiful 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 color this is probably one of my favorite colors um but this project has been such a pleasure it's just that i can't usually i knit in the evenings to wind down by what i watch a movie or something and i like to just let my hands go whereas with this project i need to focus uh, because I'm new, like most of the stitch patterns, like this um, lateral braid, I learned it on this project and this lattice section as well. So it requires a little bit of concentration. So I'm kind of slow, I've been very slow uh, compared to other knitting friends uh, in our knit along. They've already finished the shawl they cast it on the same day I cast it on. So yes, but we have time. I think the knit along will last until December. So we have some time if you still want to join. And I wanted to show you, I'm gonna show you the price. One of the subscriber here, Louise, thank you so much. She contacted me and she said that she also makes ceramic uh, buttons and she sent some for the knit along so I show them to you here they are I kind of don't want to open this little packaging but I can be careful and show them to you so Louise makes this beautiful handmade ceramic buttons look how beautiful they are 
this is her Instagram handle and also the packaging is so cute these are the buttons that are for the little price and then maybe I'll make some buttons as well or I'll gift maybe a little sock yarn like a mini set we'll see I'll talk about it uh, as we get closer to the final point of the knit along but thank you so much Louise for this beautiful beautiful price for the knit along and I didn't expect that she said I'm gonna send you some uh, buttons for the knit along and then she sent me also the most beautiful sock yarn I ever seen I haven't knitted with super many sock yarns because I'm kind of new to sock knitting I've been knitting probably like 10 pairs of socks uh, I, and I'm very much in a sock knitting mojo um, but I love this yarn I've already kicked it up because I knitted a one sock with this already but now I unraveled it because I think I want to use this yarn for a bralette, a ripple bralette, yes, because I will use this so much more. I love socks, I'm wearing a pair of socks right now as well, <laughs> knitted by myself. These are knitted with Mondim by Retrosari Rosa Pomar. Another beautiful yarn, but this is absolutely beautiful. I leave the name of the yarn and the company, it's a little Etsy shop, um, in the, on the screen. I think this colorway is hand dyed and it's, and it's called Sunny. And it has this beautiful, beautiful different colors yeah it's beautiful colors it's very autumnal and i think it will make such a beautiful ripple bralette for myself ripple bralettes are one of those garments that i wear literally every day and to prove you that i'm wearing one right now i wear them every day throughout the year it doesn't matter what temperature is outside I wear a ripple bralette and then I layer it or whatever, but I love them. It's a pattern by Jessie Made Designs, for those who don't know, and it's such a super simple, useful pattern. And I think I would love to make one for myself with this beautiful yarn because I know that if I make a sock pair, I'll use it a lot, but half of the year or more than half of the year I just don't use socks I just walk barefoot <laughs> only in the winter I use knitted socks um, hand knitted socks or woolly socks so I think this yarn will be more precious it's so precious that I wanted to knit something that will stay around my heart for long so thank you so much Louise, you nailed the colors and the style that I like and you have that as well with your project. So she's knitting beautiful socks and a beautiful shawl as well. So thank you, thank you so much. And I already kicked it up, this is a ball, so I would say ball it up. And um, I think I'll cast on a ripple bralette with this. Yes, so let's talk about some socks because we're in the realm of socks right now okay so i've casted on these pairs of socks i uh, some days ago, ago i was talking with ali from the ali in sweatpants podcast my dear friend and um uh, I told Ali I really would like to make uh, some socks that have mushrooms, like some little color work uh, looking like mushrooms. And she said, check the pattern by Stone Knits called Magic Tall Stool Socks. I put it on the screen. And I was hooked. I loved it. And I told her, let's knit a pair together. And the evening after or something like that I just cast 
I just cast it on without even telling her. I was just like so excited and focused that I kind of forgot to pick up the phone and write her. I feel very bad, Dali. But now she is knitting one as well. She's kind of like, oh, so you're, not, <laughs> you're knitting one. She saw, I think, a picture of me knitting it. And uh, yeah, so she's knitting one as well. Sorry, Ali. I was such a bad friend. Um, but we're doing like a two people knit along um, with this pattern. And here there is a little mistake, but I'll fix it. So what you can do with this pattern, at some point there is a three color thing <laughs> that you use three different colors uh, in a row. And um, that's very painting. Yes, uh, so I decided to, there is the option to just knit two colors and you add the little white dots on the little mushrooms hats. Uh, afterwards, maybe you embroider them or yeah, sew them. So I am ripping this sock, I think, back here because I made a mess with... <laughs> I made a mess with the heel. It looks like a Frankenstein heel, which by the way, I wouldn't mind it to keep, but I want to do things right. I wasn't following the pattern after the color work. I arrived here and then I just went nuts. I just decided to do my own things and it didn't work. This is quite Frankenstein looking. Let's not talk about this. And uh, so I'm kind of a little behind. I think I'll rip back here, up to here, and then uh, I'll uh, knit a little shorter version of this pattern. I think it will be like a, not really an ankle sock, but a little bit higher than an ankle sock, something like that, we'll see. But I love this pattern. It's so easy to follow the chart. Everything gets it, everything is easy, and I think I'll knit it with other colors, other yarns. Now I'm using this yarn, which is not it's not really a pleasure to knit with this yarn, to be honest. Um, so the main color is the Drops Flora. I had some skeins left from this project and the hat, and so I decided to to knit. I wanted like green socks to resemble the woods and so I decided to use this yarn. But this yarn is a wool and alpaca blend so it doesn't have any other like synthetic fiber to kind of hold the sock together a bit. Uh, so I don't know if it would be really good for socks, this one, but we try. And then I'm using for the color work, I'm using two little scrap skeins um, that I had left from uh, Make It Turned On Some Light. I'm using some uh, stash yarns, scrap skeins. This is the Moondeam yarn by Re Retrosaria Rosa Pomar. Same yarn, beautiful yarn, 100% sock yarn, 100% Portuguese wool sock yarn and this is another skein from Retrosari Rosa Pomar called Pegulal. I've knitted a shawl with these two together and uh, I had this much left so I decided to knit some color work, sorry, the color work of this beautiful sock um, with these two. So that's an exciting project to finish. I need to just rip everything, this section back and um, just follow the pattern for once, Martina. Follow the pattern to the end. It's just that I don't really like um, that heel construction. I like the German short row heel construction, um, but it's not always good for knitting the heel in another color 
if you do German short rose heel you'll have to use the same color unless you do some pirouettes uh, so I decided to just rip it back and follow the pattern and just do the heel flap construction I think he has so you just knit the fourth and back and then whatever um, yeah so I'm very happy with that pair of socks I just have to deal with that little mess then we have where are they here we have another interesting project socks steel socks and I need to also fix the color combination of these socks but I've designed this pair of socks or this only sock because I've knitted just one um, almost not even finished this sock it was so fun to design I really wanted a kind of like a cable sock uh, to you know I really wanted to design a pair of socks for myself and maybe for Mike and maybe one day I'll release this pattern who knows who knows now the stitches are not on the needles because I'm ripping back this um, brown section. I played yarn chicken. This is why I had to add this brown color. So I've been using some uh, stash yarn. I had the Regia monocolored gray sock yarn and I think it wasn't enough to knit to finish the sock and knit another one with the same amount of, with yeah the same yarn and uh, so I decided to do a little color combo but I don't know if I really like this so I'm thinking maybe I should buy another skein of this yarn or I'll just rip the entire sock back and knit this the same pattern with another yarn uh, we'll see but I'm very very proud it was this is more like um, more like a test project it's not really something that I need to have you know I yeah I just wanted to test and knit a or design a pair of cable socks so I'll probably either rip it back or we'll see um, but I'm very happy with this construction. It was fairly easy and I had so much fun with these cables. I think it looks really pretty, really beautiful. So that's an exciting project to dive into it again once I figure out what I want to do with it because now it's just opened like that. Just completely open stitches what what do you suggest shall I just continue and knit the the toes part in this brown and just like keep it uh, like that or shall I rip it back order more yarns which I don't really want because it's a nice yarn but I this color I'm a bit over it but yeah I don't know what I'll do I'll You'll figure it out um, afterwards when you'll see another podcast episode. I guess I'll have it as a finished object or something. We'll see if I even feel like doing so. Gonna have my hat on just for fun. <laughs> so, what else do I want to show you? Oh, I have next to me there there is that project i think i showed it in my latest podcast episode or even the earlier one don't remember but that cardigan needs some love i haven't touched it it's just sitting there watching me <laughs> but i yeah i haven't knitted on that cardigan i need to knit the sleeves but can't be bothered to do so now so I'm kind of done with showing you I think I've shown you all of the projects I wanted to show you 
I've started um, some other socks and then frogged them. I did a little bit of progress on a sweater that I'm knitting for Mike. It was the Ingrid Summer Sweater by Gregorias Fiber, Fibers or Gregoria Fibers. And to be honest, I think I'll uh, put it in my stash, that project, and it will stay there until next spring. Because now I don't want to knit on that project. I would like to knit on another sweater project for Mike. I really want to knit so many projects. I have I need to knit a vest for my dad for Christmas. I want to knit a drop shoulder simple sweater for Mike, like with maybe like a warmer yarn. And I want to knit the milkweed sweater by Nita Sophie. Uh, for myself. Beautiful pattern. I really would like to knit it. It's just that it's knitted with I think 3 or 3.5 millimeter needles with a fingering weight yarn I think. But um, yeah and if you haven't seen the previous um, video I dyed some yarn for myself with some natural materials that I had around like walnut hulls and um, I want to knit a sweater or a vest or maybe like a color work sweater with these two yarns maybe add some white as well we'll see but I'm very much I have yeah my knitting mojo has been skyrocketing <laughs> I think it's the cooler weather here it has been uh, so beautiful, the weather is sunny and then it has been raining a bit but also it's getting chilly. In the evening it's cold, I'm wearing like some woolly garment right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am having some fun on Patreon and sharing like recipes, for example September recipes there and some other you know vlog or life activity there and uh, I like the slow pace there and like the community that is forming so if you want to join us we we're there we're just chill, chilling around uh, so I hope you enjoyed this um, little chaotic episode and uh, I'll uh, see you very soon and uh, happy knitting. I hope you are finding some joy and that's it. Bye, see you next time. Look at this one, it looks like it's almost the same size of my face, my head. Um, this is another leaf of the plant from the plant Alliaria petiolata, so garlic mustard. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Outside is the sky. incredibly cute project that I've been working on now I don't know like this project 